just to kind of get this started and let people understand what Rocket Hub is, some of you know us, some of you don't. Um, we're probably the second or third largest Cheers. crowdfunding platform in the world right now. Obviously, we share the space with Kickstarter, and the other player would be Indiegogo. Um, I just wanted to give a little bit of background on Rocket Hub just so you understand where I'm coming from and give you a little bit of depth on it. We're up in Harlem, New York. We're probably one of the only startups in Harlem, New York. Austin Bill Clinton, it's kind of awesome. He's never there. Um, one of our biggest things is we believe in education and supporting the users and the community. And we believe that sweet spot is actually the $5,000 to $25,000 projects. Um, in a way, we focus on the 99% of crowdfunding users and let the 1% use our site, but we don't believe that those with a finished project are the ones who really are innovating at the early stages. Because we believe most of innovation is actually killed way before it even gets to a product. So what's happening? Well, traditional funding is basically impossible to get nowadays. If you look right here, the endowment for the arts is shrinking. The Science Foundation is not giving money to basically anyone. And traditional banks are basically screwing people over at very high interest rates. So what are you going to do? Oh, well, I don't know. So back in 2007, 2008, social network technology and communication tools came to a level where you're able to basically reach out to individuals on a very massive scale. And crowdfunding kind of emerged. So, you know, for those of you who don't know what crowdfunding is, and I gear this presentation to kind of be a mix of the two, uh, it's important to understand that true crowdfunding is not an e-commerce play. It should not just be about pre-selling your product. That's not the goal of what you're trying to do. It's an event. It has a beginning, it has a middle, and it has an end. And that's really, really unique, and that's what's really special about it. So what happens is you have an event, and you're able to harness a network of supporters for funds, but Really, what's cool about it is you got awareness and feedback. We have projects that not only get funds, but they actually get people who know stuff, and they communicate, and they're sharing information. And that's really what's very important about it. And we try to gear, uh, for example, our platform to be open, so we don't curate. We don't check the projects. We believe the crowd will decide that, and then we allow people to freely communicate on that. Now, sorry to say it, none of us in the last 10 years invented crowdfunding. Uh, it's just it's not the case. It's old. It's really, really old. It's been around since people were able to communicate with each other. So one of my favorite guys, Da Vinci, he basically had a small crowd of patrons who would give him funds to do stuff. And in return, they got rewards. A painting, often. A design, a blueprint. That's how it worked. On a very, 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 very small scale. But then what happened recently is the internet came around computers came around, communication tools came around, and we're able to do that on a mass level. So really, crowdfunding is an example of mass patronage. We're able to take a basic concept and scale it out rapidly. It's kind of like a beautiful plague that kind of spreads around and reaches out to everyone. So what we figured is, OK, this is cool. We really enjoy doing this. We've been doing it for a few years. And we wanted to say, OK, so crowdfunding is here to stay in some form. How can we disrupt the traditional spaces? Where's something we can do that's cool? So we said science. So why science? Well, you know how now you only hear about some kind of scientific research being done after it's been done and it's in a magazine somewhere? But we never know about it when it's actually happening or when it started to happen. It's crazy. There's a huge disconnect between society and the education and awareness we have on science. It's, it doesn't exist. It's nuts. It used to be that we actually were interested in what people were doing. So we said, let's set up a challenge. We're going to challenge some of the top universities, some of the researchers, some of the professors, some of the doctors out there to crowdfund their basic research at the early, early, early stages. So we launched the Siphon Challenge and hosted it together with some phenomenal individuals uh, back in December. And we launched the second round uh, a few weeks ago had 147 scientists at one moment in time launched a project after working together on a closed wiki space, communicating, sharing ideas, grooming each other's projects. Really, really awesome stuff. Uh, they're at about 160,000 right now, and it's going up every day. It's, it's really phenomenal. What's cool about it is people are able to relate to these projects and participate in ways that previously just did not exist. You were not able in the past to be part of some phenomenal projects that are out there in the sciences. I'm going to talk about an example uh, in a bit. So crowdfunding campaigns looks like magic to a lot of people. Like, how the heck do you get $10 million? How do you get $1 million? How do you get $50,000? How does that even work? Well, 
we aggregated about two to three years worth of our own data, uh, based about 20,000 projects worth at, at least. And it comes down to some core components, project network rewards. And that's the same for a musician raising money to record an album as much as it's a scientist doing field research, as much as it's a maker uh, trying to develop a kit on our platform or another platform. So awesome projects make awesome people. This is for any project you see out there. The point is each project that's done well out there has some kind of relationship with the user, right? So you go to this project and you feel connected to the person. There's a huge amount of psychology that's actually going on here with the human relationship and emotion. I see this, I know, either know the person or I believe in their project or it's in my space or I know someone's affected by it or something of that nature and that helps me understand what it's about. If you're able to create a project that helps people understand why you're doing this, your chances of success go significantly higher and it's just because you're creating that relationship. So Christina, it's an example from SciFund that I just find really cool. She's a bioarchaeologist. You can count the amount of bioarchaeologists in the world on basically one hand. It's nuts. And, and you know, the other four are guys. So it really is tough for her. Um, she needed just $10,000 to study ancient Roman DNA. And what she was looking to do is dig up bones and pull out the DNA that's left on the bones to research uh, the age, the gender, the heights, the hair color, the eye color, uh, hereditary diseases that these people had way back in the day in order to extrapolate some cool stuff on immigration in ancient Rome. Now, with scientists, when things start off, before they get these massive grants, which actually most of them don't, they only need a small amount of money and funds to get started just to survey the space to see if it makes sense. And that's how much the lab costed. She needed 10K, and that's it. And previously, the university said, well, screw you. We, you know, the MBAs actually give us way more money. We're not going to give you anything. And through the Siphon Challenge, she's actually able to get a lot of people involved on levels that we just did not see before. And this is an example of just you know, a very unique way of leveraging crowdfunding to actually get some phenomenal innovation done within the sciences. So the network. Um, so this actually reminds me a bit of middle school. I was a pretty awkward kid in middle school, and I'm sure you guys were as well. That's probably why we all get along. <laughs> and basically, we're all awkward people here. Uh, you, got, you got the guy who starts off as the source. In, in middle school, you had this, the high school, you know, the middle school dance, right? And you had the boys on one side and the girls on the other side, and the music is playing, and they're all staring at each other in an awkward fashion, and nobody's actually doing anything. It's because we're all awkward people. And basically, um, you needed someone to start it off and uh, get dancing. You need someone to get dancing as social influence, social leadership, and that's really what it's about. It's your first degree network. That's friends, family, people you know, people you've met, someone who gets started. If you want to contribute to a project, are you going to give money to a project at zero dollars? Of course not. They provide you the social validation to get it started. Once you have that, you get the second degree. And we've seen this happen. One project, this guy happened to be one of the dudes who works over at Reddit, and then these people provided $100,000 in less than 24 hours. It happens. But the point is, you've got to start somewhere. Now the rewards, that's the best part. It's a way to interact with people at different levels, different price points. Some people contribute $5. We've seen some people contribute $15,000. Uh, but the average is 70 and the mode is 25. Everyone has an opportunity to participate. If you're developing a kit, maybe for 200 bucks you get the kit, but maybe for $100 they can Skype call you and get feedback on a project they're working on for 15 minutes. There's different levels of interaction for different people that's important to understand with crowdfunding is you're allowing everyone to partake and feel part of the movement. And that will pay off in the long run because those individuals will change and oftentimes become amazing supporters of what you're looking to do. So as we said, you know, our platform we like to focus on the $2,000 to $25,000 sweet spot. We do bigger projects. We've done many, but we believe it's the education and enabling these kinds of individuals at the early stages, the I just need to get this started stage that is, is most excited about crowdfunding. I'm less excited about product pre-sale. That's nice, that's social e-commerce, but getting the people who are the high school kid or the early 20s guy or the person changing their, their life dreams, buying the Ferrari in their 40s, get them started with something new is, is the most powerful part about crowdfunding and that comes through education. So a few people, and Dale asked me to talk about this as well, have been asking me about the JOBS Act and I'm gonna wrap it up from here. Um, what is it? Well, 
President Obama, back in April 5th, so only a few weeks ago, signed into law this bill that will allow crowdfunding for equity pending SEC regulation. Right? So what does that actually mean? Well, we don't really know yet. But there's some cool stuff about it. So there's two ways right now to invest in a company, if you're not, you know, and I'll explain how. One, IPO. So let's say the Facebook IPO that's happening now-ish. Um, we're able to buy shares, but you know what pisses me off about that? I'm only able to buy stock after the Goldmans and those guys already put in hundreds of millions of dollars before everybody else was able to and are benefit benefiting from our ability to participate only now. And that's the crazy part. We're only now able to participate after they all had their turn, and I hate that. That's completely against what we're trying to do. So we want to kind of democratize that. And the other thing is, you know, venture capital and angel investors, and a few of you are in the audience here, and they obviously still have a space in this whole thing when crowdfunding for equity may happen. But the beautiful part of this is, how can you invest in a private company now? Well, there's all these stupid regulations and rules, but it's very, very simple. You've got to be a really rich guy. That, that's it. You've got to have over a million in assets or earn over $200,000 a year. I, I mean, seriously? Like, so what happens here is you've got to divide in social class. You only allow really rich people and really wealthy banks to have a head start over everyone else, and that just sucks. I mean, that's, that's, that's completely counterintuitive. That's what, what all of us are trying to do, and that's enabling the basic individual to have a participatory right to take a risk. You can let a guy buy $100,000 of lottery tickets, but you can't let them invest in a company at the early stage? Does that make any sense? It doesn't to me. I mean, I buy a lot of lot of tickets and I've lost, but I knew I was going to lose. So we met with the SEC, who asked us to come down to them and explain to them what crowdfunding is, because they really have no idea. And well, that's kind of scary, because they're going to regulate this thing. And I walk into this room, there's 12 attorneys all in suits, and there's me and a few of my co-founders. And you know, attorneys scare me, because they're expensive. And basically. We sit in this room and we're talking to them and saying, we have no idea what this is. It's going to ruin everything and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, wow. This is, this is freaking nuts. So we had this conversation. And out of it came the Rocket Hub white paper that we produced for the SEC. It's a 25-page white paper that basically breaks down the Jobs Act all the way through and tells them how to actually implement it in a way that will help current angel and venture capitalists, help the general market, and help the people. Uh, if anybody wants it, just shoot me an email and I'll send you the document. We're an open book. Our whole platform is open. Uh, we just had it translated this morning into Japanese by a group in Japan and it's happened in Russia as well. Um, it's some really exciting stuff and anyone who wants to learn more about this, reach out to me afterwards and I can tell you about what's happening. Thank you.